This is going to be another question and answer video, and this is going to be how to have the victorious Christian life. The first thing is, you need to be separate from the world. 2 Corinthians 6.17 says, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. See, before salvation, you hung out with the wrong people, and even if you didn't realize it, they rubbed off on you. Now that you are a born-again believer, you need to separate yourself from the world. You still witness. You still f be friendly to them. You're still kind, showing concern. But you don't go to the sinful places they go, and you don't participate in the sinful things that they do. You might think you can change them, but you can't. Only God can change them. They will pull you down much quicker than you can pick them up. Your responsibility as a Christian, is to be kind to lost people and to act like a Christian around them and to give them the gospel. You will wander around the wilderness your entire Christian life if you don't separate from the world. The children of Israel had to leave Egypt before they could get to the promised land. Egypt is a type of the world. You need to separate yourself from the world, not participating in the worldly things that they do. And next, you need to think about heavenly things. Colossians 3.2 says, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. If you've read about Israel's journey, you will notice they got off path by worshiping a golden calf. They complained. They hated their leadership. They feared men. You name it, they did it. They didn't go into the promised land because of their lack of faith. So they had to wander for 40 years before they could go in. If you don't set your affection on things above, then your faith is going to fade. When you start focusing on things down here, then it will become more important to you than what's up there. You'll wander around the wilderness your whole life and never get to the promised land, which is the victorious Christian life. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Next, if you want to have a victorious Christian life, realize you have already won. Something Israel didn't realize is that God was going to just give them the land. It was theirs. They just had to go in and take it. Deuteronomy 1.8 says, Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. As born-again believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have the victory already. And it is so sure that you have the victory that you are spiritually sitting in heavenly places right now. Ephesians 2, 6 says, And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians two fourteen. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You are a winner if you go or if you stay. If you forget that, you have already gotten the victory. If you forget you've already gotten the victory, then the devil will use the tool of discouragement on you. You will get down and out about the things of this life to the point that you will give up. Why give up if you already have the victory? It would be like being a mile ahead in a race and you stop an inch from the finish line and not even roll over the other side of the finish line. You just give up when you've basically already got the victory. Next, if you want to have the victorious Christian life, focus on finishing your course. You may fail to the flesh, the world, and the devil along the way, but you can't give up. You have to focus on finishing your course. This gives you a purpose. Without a purpose, you'll get distracted, and you won't live the victorious Christian life. But in Acts twenty twenty four, it says, But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. 2 Timothy 4, 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith, Paul says. You want to have the victorious Christian life? Remember that you want to finish your course. So anytime you mess up, confess your sin, forsake it, and just keep being concerned about finishing your course. 
Next, if you have a purpose and your purpose is to finish your course, then you need to get up early in the morning. If you want to have a victorious Christian life, get up early in the morning. You see, Joshua was the man who got the Jews into the promised land. He knew he had the victory. And God even told him himself that nobody's going to be able to stand against him. He was told he had the victory. Just like you're told you have the victory. Just like Paul said, if God be for us, who could be against us? But Joshua knew he had the victory. He's the one that got him into the promised land. And look what Joshua did in Joshua 8.10. It says, And Joshua rose up early in the morning. If you have a purpose, then you have a reason to get up out of bed. I get a lot done in the first hour and a half of my day before work while everybody's asleep. Make that be your time that you dedicate completely to the Lord. This will help you get the victory. So rise up early in the morning. You'll get a lot more done early in the morning. Next, multitasking is key. If you want to have a victorious Christian life, remember multitasking. In Nehemiah 4.17, it says, They which build it on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that laid it, every one with his hands, every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. So they, they were building with one hand, and had a weapon in the other hand. Multitasking. That's how you get things done. You'll make progress this way. For example, when I'm at work, I'm studying and reading on my breaks. And when I'm working, I'm listening to preaching or an audio Bible or looking at my memory verses on index cards. Or maybe I'll have my Bible open on a table. And every time I walk by it, I'll look down at it and read something. You so, so you see, I'm doing a lot in eight hours to ten hours at work, multitasking. I'm not only providing for my family by working, but I'm also getting to study and read. Multitasking is key, along with rising up early in the morning. But this leads me to the next thing. If you're going to live the victorious Christian life, then you're going to have to redeem the time. Are you using your time wisely? Ephesians 5.16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Colossians 4.5, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. This has more meaning to me the older I get. Time is like being in one of those old video games where the screen is pushing your character forward and you can't go backwards. Now they have the open world games where it's like you have all the time in the world. You can go back, you can do anything on them. But time is flying by, and the last thing you want to do is spend it playing video games and entertaining your flesh. You need to focus on your purpose. You need to focus on finishing your course. Focus on maintaining good works. Titus 3.8 says, This is a faithful saying, And these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Titus 3.14, And let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses, that they be not unfruitful. You want to live the victorious Christian life? Maintain good works. And next, if you want the victorious Christian life, you're going to have to fight temptation. Get you some verses to fight temptation, and when you're tempted, just quote the verses. A victorious Christian life is a fight with temptation. Imagine sin as an enemy soldier and you're using your spiritual sword to cut him in pieces. Imagine you are on a battlefield and your fighting is a holy war and you are faced with temptations from every side. And 2 Timothy 2.3 says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. James 1.12, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Get you a King James Bible. Get the eSword app on your laptop or your smartphone to search phrases and words in the Bible. Get acquainted with your weapon. Get some good hard, hard preaching to help keep you living right and fighting the flesh. Then find you a good Bible teacher to help you learn the Bible. Keep your mind on spiritual things, heavenly things. Stay reading, praying, hanging out with the right people. Don't be lazy. Get busy. Getting busy and staying busy. Rising up early in the morning. Multitasking. Redeeming the time. This is how you're going to live 
a victorious Christian life. You're not going to be perfect. You're going to fail. You're going to fall to the flesh of the world and the devil at times. You just got to keep getting back up. A just man falls seven times. He's going to get back up. But don't give up or give in. And you will live the victorious Christian life. You don't have to spend your whole Christian life wandering in the wilderness. You can be in the promised land.